Welcome to Daily Armor. Our topic for today on prayer is going to be praying for our friends. Um, we're going to be really concentrating on them today, um, whether it's good friends, whether it's um, friends maybe of the past that maybe that, you know, they are something special to you and maybe that um, through, you know, separation of uh, distance, maybe you don't get to see each other very often, but you're just thinking about them today. So ask the Lord um, to, to, pray, to help you pray for your friends today and ask him who needs need of prayer. Uh, maybe there's even been some, um, some, some bad things that has happened through the years, and but you're just going to have compassion and pray for them. So we're going to be in a couple of different passages today. I don't really have a main text, um, I guess, really, but I'm going to begin in John chapter 17, and we're going to be in the book of John a little bit, and we're also going to be in the book of Job. So if you want to kind of um, grab those two places and make, you know, put a mark there, maybe stick a piece of paper or something there. Um, we're going to be in John and we're going to be in the book of Job. Um, and we may be in a couple other passages, but I'm not sure um, how the Lord's going to um, direct um, what I've got written down. Because so many times I've, I study and I make notes and then <laughs> so many times half of them I don't even use in the devotion. So it all goes according to however the Lord, I pray for the Lord to help me with the devotion and sometimes he gives me even something really fresh as I'm reading the text or something new that I didn't even notice before when I was studying. So I'm always excited to see um, like how I've prepared, but to actually see how the devotion goes. It's kind of exciting. So I hope that those of you that I consider my YouTube friends, um, that you are praying for me. So today I could use your prayers um, and I'm going to be praying for you, even those that I've never met those that I don't know, that I feel like that through um, sharing with you things going on in my life and the things that I'm studying about, the things that I'm concerned about, the problems that I have, the the joys and the, the rejoicing that I have, the things that we want to share um, with one another, that's what friends do. That's what a friend does. A friend's going to be that one that you're going to, you can't wait to tell them what's happened. You can't wait to share with them what God showed you. And that's what I feel that I am getting to do with these devotions that I feel like that I have a whole world of friends out there um, across the internet that I haven't even met, but that we're friends because I'm excited and I get excited when the Lord gives me something and gives me a, a direction to go in and I want to share it with you. Um, and those that I do get to meet along the way and y'all are a great encouragement to me, even if it, um, you know, sometimes I know that some of y'all look at, um, the numbers, and, and I don't dwell on numbers. We could be the smallest group of friends um, that can be the most precious. Sometimes, you know, uh, people think they have to have so many friends that they're they're not anything in this world if they don't have a lot of friends and they want to be friends with everybody. Uh, but sometimes those most precious friends that you have are those closest companions, those that you share, um, the very, very closest friends that you have. They know things you like, um, they know, um, they know things that would, uh, you know, sometimes when you're asking for advice, um, you will, you will ask your closest friends because they know you, um, they know things, they, they might can point out things that you would like or things that you wouldn't like. They're a good one when you're bouncing off ideas and they'll tell you and they'll be honest and they'll tell you that's not going to be good for you. You know that's going to aggravate you because you know you have this, you know, issue over here that this is something that is, uh, you know, an aggravation to you. And so they're, you know, a, a, a good friend, a close friend, a most cherished friend knows you. All the good and all the bad and all the in-between. And they know you. And what a friend we have in Jesus. He is a friend. He is that friend that stick us closer than a brother. And if the Lord um, allows us, we're going to be looking at that text as well today. Um, that is just so precious that we um, can call on Jesus and that he is that friend. And he is that close companion. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. And there's no greater friend than him. Even if you're going through a time where you feel like you can't, sometimes you have a lot of friends, but then you just, through work and through things going on and maybe even health issues, you can't always be together. Um, you know, we know that we've had a lot of separation in this last two years. 
Um, the, this weekend for me would be two years ago, whenever th everything started changing, um, we started having to, um, close the doors of the church and only going online. You know, we, it would be Todd and myself there alone in church and, and trying to, to figure out how to do the broadcasting and getting all that done because we were trying to connect to our church family, our church friends, and what we've done over this last two years um, it through even in isolation, what we have found is that we have gained so many more friends. There's so many more people out there that are um, that are tuning in, that are um, that we are that we are meeting through the internet, um, and that we are being able to 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 be in contact. Now, the most precious way to be in contact with your friends is to connect to the Lord and pray for them and to pray for your friends. If you're separated through work or distant, you know, maybe living uh, circumstances have changed and now they're a little further away and you don't get to see each other as often. Maybe that there's a health issue that is keeping you separated. I know that um, some friends at church, they have been separated through um, an illness that has caused them to have to stay in isolation for several months. And I know that has been a source of um, depression and, and anxiety, um, but yet we are connected because I've been praying for them. So many have been praying for them. So we can still be a part of our friends' lives, even if we're separated through um, circumstances by connecting with them through prayer and knowing that they are praying for us, we are praying for them, and that, that Jesus is what brings us together. Jesus um, is that he connects us to the Father, he connects us to each other, he keeps us connected to our friends, he allows us to, and, and connects us with people we don't even know. Um, there's people that I pray for, um, one particular one I've never even met. I know uh, a, a few things, um, you know, uh, about this person, but I've never met this person, but the Lord gave me such a strong burden to pray for this person, that this person needs prayer. And I feel joined together with this person, and I am so looking forward to how the circumstances and how the Lord meets the needs in this situation. It's been going on for a while now, but I am looking forward to seeing how it all, um, how it all plays out and what all the Lord does. So in all of that, um, let's go to some text, um, and I want to first start off with, um, of course, Jesus is our best example, so let's look in the book of John, let's look in the book of John, I want you to look at uh, chapter number 17, um, and look at verse number 9, and I want you to notice um, the very first thing that you see, it says in verse number 9, it says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. Jesus is praying for his disciples here. Um, he's, he's praying for them, and he knows that there's going to be some things that are going to confuse them. There's going to be them, some things that are fixing to take place. If you keep reading in the book of John, you will, you will soon be in the scriptures of, of being in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus was praying and he had his closest friends with him there praying and they, they couldn't keep up with Jesus, but they kept falling asleep. And then we find this is where he was betrayed and betrayed by one of his friends. Um, one of his friends turned their back on him and actually um, brought the authorities and he Jesus was arrested. So in the midst of his friends and even by uh, one of his friends. So we know that our friendships are very, very important. And sometimes things can get separated. Sometimes things happen. Um, but we know that Jesus is that best example of what kind of friend we need to be. And he is saying here, I pray for them. Um, so we are praying for our friends today. And if I had a main text, that would be it. I pray for them. I am praying for my friends, even those friends that I have never even met. And we are being connected and staying connected through bringing those petitions to the Lord. Um, so let's continue on. I want you to back up to chapter 15. Um, if you look in um, chapter 15, and you're going to notice that the whole chapter 15 is in is written in red. Um, every word is from Jesus. Every word, therefore, is from God, and it's so precious. Um, if you begin at verse number one, it's taught, Jesus is explaining the true vine. 
um, and he is, you know, how we should abide in him, that he's, life is through the vine, and we are branches of that vine. We are connected to Jesus through that vine, but I want you to, I want you to skip on down, and I want us to look at verse number 14, and he says, ye are my friends, um, if you do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. He is saying, you are my friends. We, I have, I have shared with you. That, those friends that you have, you are sharing things with them. You are, um, you are dropping that, um, um, you are dropping that, um, that wall. You are letting yourself, um, be feel you are feeling safe with that person to where you could share some things maybe that um you can be yourself when you are with your friends you can just be yourself and jesus says you are my friends and i love that and he says you know that they serve we serve jesus but jesus says that we're not just servants of his but we are friends of his that we are that he has friends with us and I can say, I have a friend in Jesus. And even when through my earthly friends, there's some times of separation through circumstances and things that, that take place that are just out of our control, Jesus is always there and he is always available. And I can share things with him and I can talk to, to him. I would say that probably my, my very, very closest friend would be my husband. Um, we have just, through the beginning of our relationship, we just found that we enjoyed being together, that we, and we felt free to talk to each other about all kinds of different things that have taken place, about things that we think about, things, questions that we have, um, you know, the way that we think is so very similar. Um, I know what he likes, he knows what I like, uh, but even in saying all that, there are things that... I, sometimes I can't even explain, but I can take them to the Lord. I can't even tell Todd everything that I want to tell him because sometimes I don't even know how to put it into words. But I can go to Jesus and you can go to Jesus and he can be that closest friend. So when there's things that I don't share with my friends, when there's things that I don't share with Todd, who would be my the, my very best friend, um, that's not because of anything um, you know, anything negative, but sometimes I just don't know how to put it into words and I don't know how to explain it, but I can share those things with Jesus. And so everything else that we are able to let our guard down and just share with our friends, um, with, with no, um, you know, with no judgment, just beginning to be honest. That's so refreshing and so freeing, um, when we can just be open and honest and we can laugh and, and we, you know, we can share each other's troubles, we can share each other's trials, and we can share each other's joys and triumphs and, and just be so happy for one another. So you know that, um, you know, that not everybody is happy for you, but your closest friends, they're going to be so happy for you when something great happens. They're not going to be jealous. They're not going to be envious. They're going to be so happy and joyful for you. So um, in saying all that, in, in chapter 15, I love that Jesus was explaining about the vine and the branches um, and that he also was sharing with his, uh, with his disciples that you're not just, you know, you're not just serving me and learning from me. I'm your teacher, but I'm also your friend. And we have, um, we have that friend that is closer than a brother. Uh, we hear that, uh, that scripture a lot. Um, I want us to go to that. Let's, let's go to Proverbs. Um, Solomon being the wisest man. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Um, if you go after Job and Psalm, and here we've got Proverbs. Um, Proverbs chapter number 18. I've got my place marked here if I can find it. Chapter number 18 and verse number 24. It says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Um, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, so a man that has friends has to show himself friendly. You have to kind of, you have to kind of put yourself out there. You kind of have to let your guard down. Um, you have to put yourself out there, not be afraid to have friends, to make friends. Um, you have to be friendly. 
Um, it's a it's a relationship. It's a give and take. So even our relationship with God, He wants it not to be one sided, but it to be interconnecting. It could go back and forth. Um, not that we have any advice to give to Him by by no means. We have praise and worship um, to give to Him and thanksgiving to give to Him. But we do give to Him those things that He needs and that He deserves. Um, and we do, we, we are able to give him those things. Um, I wouldn't, you know, give the Lord advice. I know that whenever I was first um, saved and I was praying, I was telling the Lord a list of all these things, you know, okay, Lord, this, this situation needs this. And I would just give him all these ideas of, of how he can make it happen and what could do. And I'm just like, that was so silly. Um, but I just uh, stopped uh, all that years and years ago. And um, because it was all silly, but that he knows that, um, and he probably got a good laugh about it. Um, but we, um, my, what, what I can give to my relationship with God is praise and worship, and I can bring petitions. I can trust Him, um, and He wants us to trust Him, and that's part of that relationship, and that's part of um, the relationship you have with friends. Is is you have a certain amount of trust. Um, you have to trust the people that you're with. Um, if you're not trusting them, then you're treating them as an enemy. So if you're going to be friendly, you're going to be trusting this, you know, these friends that you and I have, you're going to trust them. Um, I feel like I have to have a certain amount of trust with you here on the, through the internet, through my YouTube friends. I have to have a certain amount of trust with you that you're not, um, you're not picking me apart, that you're not looking at every wrong thing that I say, and sometimes I stumble with my words, sometimes I can't find my passage right quick, and I am way more judgmental on myself than you probably are with me, but I am trusting that you are compassionate, and that you are praying for me, and that you are joining me with these things that we pr we pray about, and that we share, and we talk about, and we look at scriptures, because we are all growing, and we're growing in Christ, and when we are sharing that with one another, um, that we are opening ourselves up and we have a certain amount of trust. So, um, and then we know that we, there's no one we can trust like Jesus. There's no friend, um, you know, uh, like him. And we see that here in the book of Proverbs that's described. Um, let's read that again. Um, 18 and verse 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That friend is Jesus. He stick us closer than a brother. Um, we we can be close with our friends, um, but there's always boundaries. It seems like there's always something, and whether it's distance or you know circumstances, whatever. But there's never any boundaries when we're speaking about Jesus. Um, I want us to look at um, the Song of Solomon. Just so, just go over just a little further. Um, and go over to the Song of Solomon. It's just a few chapters away. Um, the Solom Song of Solomon, chapter number 5 and verse number 16. Um, I found this as I was studying today. Um, I've looked at this. Um, you've probably looked at this as well. Um, and we know that Solomon here is, is um, you know, writing the, the Song of Solomon. Here we've got um, a description. This is going kind of going back and forth, but I want you to just really notice verse number 16. It says, his mouth is so sweet, yet he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. So this is a relationship that Solomon is having, and in the relationship, this one, you know, this is being shared um, and we can correlate this right with the book of Proverbs that that friend, this is speaking about that friend that we have in Jesus and that his words, um, his words, his, his mouth is most sweet, yet he's altogether lovely. And this is describing how wonderful um, a friend we have in Jesus. He is altogether lovely. His mouth is most sweet. So the words that come out of his mouth are precious. When I'm looking at the book of John and I'm seeing all these red letters, those words are so precious and they are so sweet to me and they are so sweet to you. They are so sweet in the ears of the disciples here. They are fixing to undergo probably the worst um, experience that they have had thus far as followers of Jesus Christ, they are fixing to watch their um, their master, their teacher be taken and be beaten and be imprisoned. And then they're going to be watching him die on the cross. 
and they're going to be getting his body and wrapping it and placing it in a tomb, and they are going to be so confused and so hurt yet they have to fall back on the words of Jesus. And that's what I do. I fall back on his words. They bring me comfort. They are sweet. They are lovely. He is altogether lovely. And he, he knows how to comfort me. And those friends that we have, sometimes they know how to comfort you. And they don't have to say anything at all. Sometimes if you can just be together, um, they don't even have to say anything at all. The kind of friend that we don't want to be um, let's look at the book of Job. We don't want to be that that kind of friend um, like Job had. Job had some friends, and um, and I will say that the Lord took care of it. So I'm not sure what all scripture we'll get to here, um, but let's look in the book of Job. I want to start with Job chapter 16. Let me find my place here. Job chapter 16. I want to look at verse number 20. Job chapter 16, verse number 20. It says... Um, Job chapter 16, verse number 20. I'm in the wrong chapter here. There we go. There we go. Um, it says, My friends scorn me, but mine eye poureth out tears unto God. So even sometimes um, when our friends have not understood something, when our friends have misunderstood something, um, and which is exactly what is taking place here in the life of Job. Job is going through all of this. He is, it is, looks to his friends as if he is being punished by God. They do not know, Job does not know that this is a test that the Lord is saying he is um, able to pass, that he is allowed to come into his life, that he is showing that Job is going to serve him not because of all the blessings, but even in spite of all of the tragedy that he undergoes, that, that Job is still going to worship God. He's still going to trust God. He's still going to look to God. And so he is going through this horrendous, terrible, horrible experience. Um, he has lost his, all of his animals have been taken. His children have been taken. Um, he is, uh, his health has been taken. He has just had everything ripped from him. Everything except for his life has been taken. And the friends that he has look at this situation and they keep saying, Job, what have you done? Um, we know that you, you, uh, you know, we always thought you were this, this perfect person. We always thought that you were the most honorable man, but you must have done something in secret. You must be, there must be something about you that we don't know. And what have you done? God is punishing you. And so sometimes we go through things and our friends don't understand or they misunderstand what's going on. And we don't even understand ourselves. We don't even know what else is going on ourselves. Sometimes we don't even know how to explain it. Um, but so we're going to have those times when our friends um, they turn away from us. Um, maybe that they, um, you know, they think there's something that we're hiding when there's not. We just don't even know how to put it into words. But sometimes we're going to go through these experiences. And here we see that happen in, in Job's life. And he goes through this and it was horrible. Um, he feels that, uh, he says it again here in chapter 19 in verse number 14. He says, my kinsfolk have failed. So he's even saying that not just my friends, but my family it don't understand that my family has forsaken me. My my kinsfolk had failed and my familiar friends had forgotten me. He's saying everybody has is, is shunned me. Every, everybody has walked away. Um, sometimes, um, especially through these last couple of years, it's not that, ever, that, that our friends have always walked away, but it's just we're separated sometimes by circumstances. And we have to find different ways to, to, to join together. But we're going to all experience this in our lives at some point. We're all going to go through um, some of this that Job has experienced. I want you to know, though, that even when you go through those times, even when then you don't understand and they don't understand, that God knows and he does understand. And I want us to look in Job chapter 42. I want you to go there. The last two scriptures that I'll share is verse number 7 and verse number 10. Verse number 7 says, And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. So he's, the Lord is taking care of, he is handling these three friends that Job had, these three friends that have just brought him more anguish, that have just brought him more misery, that have not helped his situation, but have made his situation far worse. Um, you know, they have, you know, just because they're, they're just misunderstanding what's going on, but God himself, 
is taking care of that. So in our lives, whenever I have misunderstood what was going on, I didn't understand what was going on. God deals with me. Uh, and that's what he's doing here in the life of Eliphaz and the other friends. He's saying, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. He's saying, what you're telling him is wrong. What you have thought, what you have what you have shared with Job has been wrong. You have misunderstood. You don't understand. You're not God and you don't understand what he's going through and what's going on and why that I have allowed this. I have not allowed this because I'm punishing him, but I have allowed this because Job is up for the challenge and the, the, the Lord knows what he's doing and why he's doing these things. Um, and it doesn't always make sense to us and it definitely won't always make sense to our friends. But I, wanna, I want us to look at this last verse. Um, and verse number 10, and it says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Don't miss that. He prayed for his friends. And we're praying for our friends today, not just our friends that, um, that we are still friendly with, but maybe even the friends of our past, maybe even friends that have let us down, friends that have misunderstood us, maybe friends that, that we have misunderstood. Pray for them. Um, that, that's, you know, that's something that it's easy to pray for those that you love. Um, and I'm not saying that, that you have friends that are now enemies. I'm just saying there's maybe some friends that through separation of time or circumstances or maybe even something that, you know, maybe some kind of bad, bad thing that happened, that God wants you to still pray for them. Um, if there's somebody that's been in, been a friend to you in the past and something has happened and, and y'all just, you know, you just had to separate the friendship. Just continue to pray for them and pray for the light of Jesus Christ to shine in their life. Pray for the light of Jesus Christ to shine out in your life so that you can show yourself friendly to them again. So you can maybe even restore that friendship one day. Um, but if nothing else, at least you're praying for them and you're being obedient unto the Lord and you're having compassion. You don't have, you don't have any bitterness. Job did not even need to have any bitterness to his friends. It would have brought him low, it would have turned him, um, you know, it would have turned him to in the wrong direction to have had anger and bitterness. I mean, if everything Job had went through and the Lord brought him through all that, not for him to be bitter, but for him to be better. And the better one is the one that's praying and that will pray for their friends, no matter what the circumstances. So today, let's pray for all of our friends. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.